So I don't know if it's just me, but before fall 2021, I never really heard much about Blue Marine. My knowledge of the brand was limited to very few recognizable editorial campaign images and, of course, the iconic Molly Gunn birthday dress from Uptown Girls. That all changed with the appointment of Nicola Bargnono as creative director in 2019. Intrigued by this revelation, I embarked on a journey to delve deeper and expand my knowledge of Blue Marine's history, evolution, and creative direction. Blue Marine was established by husband and wife duo Anna Molinari and Gianpaolo Tarabini in 1977. Anna was the muse, designer, creative director of the brand, and as far as I can tell, Gianpaolo handled the business side of things and later went on to be CEO of Blue Marine's parent company, Bluefin. Gianpaolo was also the one to come up with the name for the brand. According to Anna's book, Anna Molinari Blue Marine, Gianpaolo said to her one day while staring at the sea, Blue, blue like the sea, Blue Marine, that's what we'll call ourselves. As far as I can tell, the couple were really devoted to each other. They started dating at age 18 and were together until Gianpaolo died in 2006. Anna was already somewhat involved in the business of fashion from a young age as she came from a family of industrialists who produced knitwear. This went on to greatly influence her work for Blue Marine. Their very first ready-to-wear collection mainly showcased knitwear and knitwear remained a mainstay of the brand's identity even post-rebrand. Also, the rose emerged as a prominent symbol of Blue Marine. Blue Marine's incorporation of roses is believed to symbolize women and their femininity. When speaking about the fashion scene in 1980s Italy, Anna said, what new element did I bring to that world? My roses, first and foremost. Flowers are one of the most beautiful thing in creation. To me, they symbolize feminine beauty, grace, energy, encapsulated in a single marvelous entity. Every woman is a bit like that, fragile and strong at the same time. Anna had a working relationship and deep bond with Franco Moschino of The House Moschino. He helped her create more structured pieces and they even collaborated on shows together. She credited him as one of the main driving forces in her early career. By the 1990s, Anna Molinari ventured further into creating other garments. The Marine started to become known as a Italian luxury fashion house revered for their alluring yet delicate designs. Blue Marine's style at this time could be characterized as a combination of edginess and romanticism. One collection that really showcased this element of Anna Molinari's design philosophy is the Fall Winter 1993 collection. This collection was really strong overall, apart from the section including pastel suits and riding pants, which felt really disconnected from the rest of the show for me. A little random, especially considering the striking gothic bridal look that opened the show. The remaining two thirds of the collection were absolutely breathtaking and exemplified Alan Mononari's talent for seamlessly blending romanticism and sensuality. One of my favorite aspects was the creative use of floral necklaces and appliques, which added a whimsical touch, I think. The styling included pastel tights, ballet flats, corsages, and headpieces, which were impeccably done in my opinion. If you've seen my previous video about ballet core, you know I love that trend. The middle section of the show really gave ballet core and was a huge inspiration to me when I was writing that video. There is even an amazing ballet dance intermission two thirds of the way through the show, which kind of acts as an introduction to the winter bride section. Again, amazing styling, the coats and the use of fur and also the extra blushy cheeks complemented the tall satin bridal gown perfectly in my opinion. By the mid 1990s, Anna seemed to have gotten a real feel for what she believed the house codes of Blue Marine should be, knitwear remaining one of the staples of the brand's identity. Anna Molinari's fur trim sweaters and cardigans continue to retain their relevance even till today. To me, nothing is more synonymous with 90s fashion than a good quality for a trimmed cardigan, so I love them. The fall winter 1996 collection showcases all the house codes that define Blue Marine's aesthetic at this point. Drawing inspiration from icons like Marilyn Monroe, Jackie Kennedy, Audrey Hepburn, this collection embodies their timeless femininity and serves as a tribute to womanhood. This is a little random, but to me, these looks were very reminiscent of Rachel Green's outfits from the flashback episodes of Friends. Designed with a confident, affluent, yet youthful and playful woman in mind, this collection captures the essence of her persona in that episode perfectly to me. 
This era marked the beginning of Blue Marine's love for animal print and vibrant bold colors. In the early 2000s, the brand began to release lingerie and swimwear. They were quintessentially Y2K in the best possible way. I really feel like it captures the essence of the brand signatures at this time. Blue Marine's lingerie designs embrace a romantic and seductive aesthetic, often featuring soft pastel hues, intricate lace work, delicate fabrics, and floral patterns. The swimwear designs incorporated bold prints, vibrant colors, and figure flattering cuts that really accentuated the natural curves of the body. Blue Marine's lingerie and swimwear collections in the early 2000s epitomized the brand's commitment to creating alluring and stylish pieces for confident and fashionable women. I want to take a moment to speak about Blue Marine's campaigns and editorials from this era. They are, as previously mentioned, very recognizable to me. They were mostly shot by renowned photographer Helmut Newton. He was instrumental in creating the brand's signature aesthetic in the earlier years and also some of their most recognizable campaigns, at least pre Nicola Bargnano. If you follow any 90s archive pages or are on fashion Twitter, I can almost guarantee you've seen at least one of these iconic campaign images come up on your timeline. Luminum experienced significant success in the 2000s, solidifying its reputation as a prominent luxury fashion brand with its feminine and glamorous design, attracting a loyal following that even included celebrity clients. The dress worn by Brittany Murphy in the movie Uptown Girls was first shown at the spring-summer 2002 runway show. From the moment I saw this dress, when I first watched the movie, age 13, it's been carved into my brain. I would be honored to someday own it, although it seems pretty hard to come by, um, so that's probably unlikely. The dress was recently worn by Ivy Getty during New York Fashion Week in 2022 and received a lot of attention on TikTok and Instagram. With all the renewed interest in the brand and the dress, I would love if Blue Marine would do a reissue or reinterpretation of it. I would literally save up all my pennies. If anyone from Blue Marine is somehow listening to this, I would love a reissue. The brand's ability to consistently deliver fun, faithful yet elegant collections during this period contributed to its continued growth and recognition in the fashion industry. This was until its flop era. As I'm sure you know, around the 2010s, fashion and pop culture began to favor a more minimalistic aesthetic, which didn't really align with Blue Marine's loud, bright, maximal Y2K aesthetic. Following this, there was a bit of a shift. Blue Marine now aimed to target an older clientele, at least so it seems, with their lower hemlines, higher necklines, and generally more conservative styling. Also, the color palettes were overall more toned down during this era, I guess, to fit the vibe of the chime. I don't know if it's my personal aversion to 2010s fashion or just the actual clothes themselves, but I really dislike this era of Blue Marine. It's just very phase 8 meets generic Zara, I guess. Things did begin to change around November 2019 when EIH, an Italian holding company, acquired Bluefin, which was, of course, Blue Marine's parent company. Machi really seemed to want to shake things up at Blue Marine and eventually went on to replace Blue Marine's founder, Anna Molinari, with a younger designer, Nicola Barognano. I really love and value and appreciate all the work that Anna did for the brand in the 2000s, but I do feel like this was a necessary change. Bargnano's appointment at Blue Marine really rejuvenated the fashion house by appealing to a younger generation and was one of the first brands in 2020 to capitalize on the resurgence of the Y2K aesthetic. Bargnano has managed to reinterpret the Blue Marine identity while paying homage to the creative legacy of Anna Molinari through incorporating its popular house coats. Like, of course, knitwear, roses, and animal prints, Nicola also often references the early Helmut Newton ad campaigns in his own ads and editorials. Blue Marine's house coats have evolved over time to reflect changing trends and appeal to a new generation, where the old Blue Marine led by Anna Molinari embraced a romantic and subtly sexy aesthetic. In contrast, Nicola Bargnano's vision for the brand is more overt in its displays of sexiness. I'm really a fan of Bargnano's approach. It's a lot more bold and provocative and I feel like that really makes sense for the time and the generation that he is trying to appeal to with his collection. Where the old Blue Marine was renowned for embracing traditional femininity and traditional ideas of what a woman should should look like. The new Blue Marine takes a slightly
slightly more androgynous approach, really catering to Gen Z audiences. This shift is evident in the use of models and hairstyles which align with current trends of the time. Nicola Bagnano, being aware of Gen Z's slightly more trend-conscious nature, is willing to embrace that in his approach to Blue Marine's evolution. When speaking about his vision for Blue Marine, Nicola says, The fashion world moves so quickly and designers need to show something new every season, but it has to represent the brand. You have to be aware what the world wants. Blue Marine has successfully carved out notable status in pop culture, particularly in the realm of social media. Following the revamp of the brand, they have made an effort to cultivate a strong social media presence on various social media platforms. This has allowed Blue Marine to connect to a broader audience and engage with fashion enthusiasts and, of course, stay relevant. Heightened interest in Blue Marine's current collection in conjunction with a surge in popularity of trends like Barbie core and ballet core have created a notable impact on the vintage market. Platforms such as Depop and The Real World are witnessing a surge in listings from Blue Marine pieces at higher prices reflecting the growing demand for the brand. According to Kelly McSweeney, the merchandising manager of The Real Real, who was interviewed in 2021 about the resurgence of Blue Marine, certain Blue Marine items are experiencing an increase in value and are highly sought after by skirts, knits, of course knits, and tops have seen a significant rise in average sales and Blue Marine resale value has climbed 21% compared to the same period previous year, indicating a growing interest and value in the brand's offerings. As of today, Blue Marine stands as a shining example of innovation and adaptability in the ever-changing landscape of fashion today. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the brand's rich history and iconic comeback. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.